Several announcements before we begin. First off, the most important one, the restrooms are downstairs on your left. Um, secondly, if you have Verizon cell service, I would appreciate you switching your phones to silent. AT&T and the other providers are kind of spotty, so if we don't take any chances and you, everybody puts it on silent, it will work much better. Shall we begin? Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. We can have faith that the God who strengthens, the God who loves, will continue to love. It is God's love that we can feel today, even though death happens. God's love never leaves us. Through that love, we know that Dan is in a place where there is no more dying, no more tears, no more fears. Let us rejoice this day that as we speak, God is taking care of him right now. We who are left behind may be sad, but through that same love, God will see each one of us through as well. Have confidence that God has Daniel well in hand. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, remember before you this day our brother Daniel. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console we who mourn. Weep with those of us who are weeping and strengthen us all in our faith. Eternal God, who loves, whose love never fails, and who can turn the shadow of death into the light of life. Illumine us through your word, so that hearing your promises, we may be lifted out of darkness and distress into the light and peace of your presence. Give us faith to see in death a gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence, we may continue our course on earth until by your call, we are united with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I have several readings for you today. The first is from the book of Revelation, where God paints a word picture. <clears throat> Hear now the words from the Apostle John in Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of eternal life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God. They will be my children. And now a psalm, a psalm of hope, a psalm of confidence, and a psalm of God's love. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And now one of my favorite readings by an author called Stan Curtis. He writes, When I was 19, I was attending school in the Bronx in New York City. My family had been living in another state, but while I was in school, my dad was transferred to an assignment on Staten Island. They moved and settled in, but I had not yet been to the new house. I had never been to Staten Island. But on the first day off from school, I decided to go visit. First, I took a subway to the tip of Manhattan. There I boarded a ferry for the cruise across the harbor. Once I got to the island, I had to take the bus from the ferry terminal to a small train station. Then I went by train to the neighborhood where my family was living, and finally, I walked the last few blocks until I came to the house they now occupied. None of the trip was familiar to me. It was all new and strange. But when I knocked on the door and my mother opened it, I suddenly knew I was home. My mom, dad, and brothers were there. It was their presence and not the surroundings that made the place home. I suspect our journey in death may be something like that, new and a little strange. But when we arrive and are greeted by God that we have trusted in life, we will know. This creates a word picture by Henry Van Dyke. I am standing upon a seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails in the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength, and I stand and watch until at last she hangs like a speck of white cloud, just where the sky comes down to mingle with the sea. Then someone at my side says, there she goes. Gone where? Gone from my sight is all. She is just as large and massed and hull and spar as she was when she left my side and just as able to bear her load of living freight to the place of destination. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone says, there she goes, there are other eyes watching, watching her coming and other voices ready to take up the glad shout. Here she comes. <clears throat> and now, a short piece written by Dan's mother. She says, we raised our family to the best of our ability through age 18. They have picked the paths they wish to follow. The rest is up to them. We will always love them, but they have to live their own lives. In God's hands, we place our family. It is His will what becomes of them. And finally, the Apostle Paul from 1 Corinthians tells us exactly how we conquer death. He writes, I need to emphasize, friends, that our natural earthly lives don't in themselves lead us by their very nature into the kingdom of God. Their very nature is to die. So how could they naturally end up in the life kingdom? But let me tell you something wonderful, a mystery I'll probably never fully understand. We're not all going to die, but we are all going to be changed. You hear a blast to end all blasts from a trumpet, and in the time it took you to look up and blink your eyes, it's over. On signal from that trumpet from heaven, the dead will be up and out of their graves beyond the reach of death, never to die again. At the same moment and in the same way, we'll all be changed. In the resurrection scheme of things, this has to happen. Everything perishable, taken off the shelves and replaced by the imperishable, this mortal replaced by the immortal. Then the saying will come true, 
death swallowed by triumphant life. Who got the last word, O oh death? O oh death, who's afraid of you now? It was sin that made death so frightening and law code guilt that gave sin its leverage, its destructive power. But now, in a single victorious stroke of life, all three, sin, guilt, and death, are gone. The gift of our Master, Jesus Christ. Thank you. come to pay their respects to Dan. Dan lived his life as a regular guy, working diligently driving a truck and in the trades. He liked to tinker, and he was busy with his computer and carpentry. He enjoyed hiking as well. He has left behind many people who knew him, many people who loved him. I want to speak boldly to you today because the death of any person represents a shock and an affront to our own existence. Death confronts us daily in the newspapers and on television, but there's something about the death of a person we know that jars the soul and forces us to look at our own humanity. I want to offer hope not merely as a salve for the hurt we feel, but also as a way forward for all of us who seek to live full lives. Our scripture, the scripture lesson from Paul, contains some of the most bold and daring words that has ever been written. In this text, Paul roots, roots out the truthfulness of the Christian claims about life and the reality of Jesus' resurrection from the grave. This is audacious. This is something new. This is wild. Because it's never been done. It's a risky claim. Think about it. Many of us associate religion with feelings and thoughts about the divine, with emptying ourselves of our cares, with rituals, and with prayer. We seek out religious instruction during the difficult times, such as the death, death of a loved one or high points, like a wedding or a baptism of a child. Yet in our, in our passage today from Corinthians, Paul is not satisfied with the status quo. Instead, he writes as one completely convinced that Jesus was truly raised up by God from the tomb in which he was resurrected. That resurrection, Paul declares, is the basis for a powerful and subversive hope for us. It's powerful because it offers a transforming message to each and every one of us. It's subversive because Paul makes universal claims on the basis of Christ's resurrection. Why is Paul so adamant about this whole resurrection? What does it matter today for us? We're sitting here mourning the loss of Dan. <coughs> well, I'll tell you. Because of that resurrection, we can have hope. Death is not the end. The end of this life merely marks the beginning of eternity. Jesus' victory over the grave gives us all hope for life after our earthly existence ends. Because Jesus is raised from the dead, we can believe that transformation is possible. As many of us look inward for some meaning during this time of mourning, we often don't like what we find. We long to change and live lives of meaning and purpose. <clears throat> Yet we doubt that authentic change is possible, but I want to encourage you that true transformation is possible simply because Jesus is alive today. If God was able to raise Jesus from the dead, he is more than able to transform the lives of each and every one of us. Because Jesus was raised from the dead. We know God's forgiveness. Many of us are feeling regret today. There are familiar things that are no longer familiar. Dan is no longer with us, and we can no longer take his presence for granted. Although it's been a month and a half since his passing, 
things don't get back to normal that quick. Normal will have to be redefined. Jesus' resurrection takes all that into account. The good news is that the same God who raised Jesus from the dead offers forgiveness, healing, and unconditional love to each one of us today. I want to let Tyler and Melissa and Megan know that this isn't the end. To Karen and Emery, the times that you have spent with them are not the last times you will spend with them. The whole family will see Dan again due to God's love and God's forgiveness. Dan was and is important to God. From the time he played baby Jesus in the Christmas pageant, God has watched over Dan. There were some hard times, and even times when you didn't see Dan, but there was never a time he wasn't under God's watchful eye. So take heart today. For today, we are thankful to Dan for leading his life and blessing all of those who he blessed. And we are thankful to God that he has helped Dan along the path. And we are thankful that God has found Dan a home in heaven where he will live forever, surrounded by the love of God. So for this time, let us find comfort in God. It is a difficult time, but God has seen us and everyone through difficult times before. So while Daniel isn't here to receive your love, have faith that God's love through Christ won't ever let him down. Let God hold you. Let God help you to resume a normal life. Trust that God has your best interests at heart. Austin's, note that Dan, even though he's out of sight for a while, God will keep him close. God will keep him close in his heart and in your heart. Take peace, knowing God's love. He's right around the corner with Dan to give you and you and you all his peace and his love. Amen. Edmund, I'd like you to come up and give a eulogy if you would. Some of you do not realize this, but our last family picture in Vermont was actually his idea. He called me late one night to let me know that there was something missing from the previous one, and that, that was him for everybody that. 
So putting things together is a new building picture or portrait was arranged. Not so bad was. Danny was an interesting character, and I'm sure many of our other siblings. Okay. Then we had a few little late night phone calls where we would just talk and talk. He will be missed. This is here and up. Lonnie, little brother. And we all do. Um, Kelly, you want to take care of Randy's head? Sure. Uh, Todd, you want to take care of your little brother? Huh? Dan and I certainly enjoyed doing Blue Fist fishing, and I have sad, great that we seem, excuse me, seem to not get there just one more time. He always had the connect and the mechanical repairs, and that was definitely one thing that he was going to be And we're going to have two more outlets. Kelly, take care of
as we grew older, life took us in different directions, and we lost touch with each other. But I believe it was by God's grace that more than a year ago, Danny made a home just before his health took a turn for the worse. Excuse me. <coughs> he, was quite, he was quite proud and kept to himself because he was not here to be a burden. Respecting that, I left him alone. However, having just come back from South Carolina and being so thin and frail, I dropped off a bunch of Gap sweatshirts with Mom, just so he had something warmer to wear. From then on, he was almost always wearing one. It made me feel good to know that it might have made him just a little more comfortable despite everything he was enduring. It had been quite a tough year for him, and finally, God gave him peace. About a week or so after he passed, I bumped into one of my mom's dad's neighbors while walking their dog. The neighbor recognized me too and came over to give me her condolences for the loss of my brother. She told me she would see Danny down in the parking lot and he would come over to, and talk to her and would offer to help unload her car. To thank him for being such a kind person, she made and brought him a blueberry cobbler. And that would be the memory I choose to hold on to of Danny wearing a Gap sweatshirt helping someone carry their groceries, and enjoying some cobbler. I like that image. Sleep peacefully, big brother. This one is a poem written by my brother Randy, and I will try to read it as it was meant to be read. Sometimes at night, I think of you and wonder how you're being. In that moment, a world away and still in sight. If only for that brief and fleeting moment, and I close my eyes and drift away to a place where that moment is forgotten. And I pray you well to carry on, to let time foretell, and cast those prayers onto the wind that carry to the stars above, and send this love, all this love, that has no end. Each day begins the same, it seems, a thought, a hope you're happy, in that moment, and then goes on, so much routine, until memory brings you back into the moment, and lets me know wherever you are is not so far, a moment unforgotten. And I pray you well to carry on wherever you dwell, and cast those prayers onto the wind that carries to the stars above, and send this love, all the love that has no end. If you look around at everyone gathered here, you are gathered because you either knew or you loved Dan. Now chances are, this whole gathering will never be together again. So while you're going to have the opportunity to go downstairs uh, for some food and coffee and that kind of thing afterwards, if there is something that anyone would like to share with the whole group, now would be the time. If you have perhaps a fond memory, a funny story, or anything else you might wish to say about Dan, now would be the time. Just raise your hand, and I'll call on you. <clears throat> raise your hand. Going once. Okay, well then let us pray. Great God of all mystery, if in the presence of death our thoughts are startled and our words flutter about like frightened birds, bring us stillness. That we may cover the sorrow of our hearts with folded hands Give us grace to wait on you silently and with patience. You are nearer than we can know, closer than we can imagine. 
If we cannot find you, it is because we Before the burden came upon us, your strength lifted it. Before sorrow darkened our hearts, you were grieved. As you walk in the valley of every shadow, be our good shepherd and sustain us while we walk with you, lest in weakness we falter. Though the pain deepens, keep us in your way and guide us past every danger through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. We thank you this afternoon, O oh God, for the life of your servant Dan. We thank you, Lord, for being able to rest and abide in you. With you in our lives, we are never alone. And we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now go from this place in peace. Go from this place in joy. God has Dan. Well, Dan. God is giving him rest. God is giving him love. God is giving him hope. Please come downstairs. Enjoy our hospitality, and it will be wonderful to talk with you about me. Thank you for coming.
Who are you? Because they've been trying to 
know how to live in awful trouble with the time. <laughs>